If you're a Web3 business owner, you know that the tax and accounting landscape is constantly changing and it's imperative for you to stay on top of both your taxes and your accounting to ensure that you protect your company's bottom line. In this video today, I'm going to go over best practices for establishing an accounting and tax system for your company. The first step to establishing a proper tax and accounting system for your Web3 business is setting up the correct legal and tax entity structure. Depending on how your business is structured, this can be a C corporation, an S corporation, an LLC, or a partnership. The specific entity structure choice should be guided by a tax professional, and it should be planned in advance to ensure that you're optimized from a tax perspective for the entity structure that you pick. You want to be deliberate in picking the correct entity structure and establishing this upfront to ensure the integrity of your company, the accuracy of your tax filings, and the overall integrity of the accounting system that you establish as well. Step number two to properly establishing a tax and accounting system for your Web3 business is setting up the proper bank accounts, wallets, and financial accounts and in order to avoid commingling funds. What is commingling funds? It's when you mix personal funds with business funds where you mix multiple businesses together in one account. This causes both accounting nightmares and tax nightmares. That's because on the accounting side, we would have to go and start to parse out all of these transactions for whatever the specific fact, fact pattern is, splitting in between both your businesses, splitting in between personal and business. So that's number one, it's going to be an accounting nightmare. Number two is depending on the fact pattern of the flow of funds, there can be tax headaches or even negative tax implications to some of the movement of your funds if it wasn't thought out in advance and it wasn't done appropriately. So, you know, this gets very contextual, but you want to avoid mixing funds together. It's just going to create headaches for your accountant, headaches for your tax advisor, <clears throat> and overall it's just going to lead to inaccuracies in your accounting and potential tax issues down the road. Now, how do you avoid commingling? Once you set up those company accounts, you want to set up a whole entire different financial system from your company that's separate from anything else you have going on personal or anything else that you have going on in any other business. This means that you want to establish separate bank accounts under the EIN that you set up for your company. You want to establish separate institutional exchange accounts under the EIN that you set up for your company. It's very common people will use personal exchanges to cash out or to on-ramp funds. This needs to be avoided. Similarly, for Non-custodial activity, we want to set up dedicated wallets to the business that, you know, shouldn't be wallets that you also are having personal transactions in or transactions in for other businesses. So this is a huge one. This is one I see a lot with Web3 businesses, especially in the earlier days when they're getting set up. Avoid commingling funds. The next step when you're setting up an accounting and tax system for your Web3 business is choosing the appropriate accounting system and making sure that you set this up properly, implement it within your business, and then update it on a regular basis. There are many different accounting softwares that are out there, all with varying capabilities, varying price points, and varying features that each software offers. It's important to take a look at where your business is now, where your business is planning to go in the future, and pick a software that's appropriate for your needs and when you're making this selection, you want to make sure that we can get the right reporting from the software. The software has the right integrations with other third-party softwares and accounting applications that you'd be using. And that for your needs as a business, for where your business is at, that the price point is appropriate for the features in the software that you're using. These are some of the things that we want to assess when we're selecting the correct accounting software and the correct accounting system. But overall, we want to make sure that we get a sophisticated accounting system established up front so we're not scrambling to get this in place later. This is going to ensure that we have an accurate set of financial statements, which is going to be the foundation 
for any decision that you make as a business owner. Once we've selected the appropriate accounting software and accounting system, it, the next step really comes down to making sure that this is set up appropriately. A lot of making sure your accounting ac is accurate is getting a good system set up front and then just simply managing that on a monthly basis. So this means we wanna get a, a really good chart of accounts set up. We wanna get good integration set up between all of your accounting systems. We want to look at what types of transactions that we're seeing consistently on your activity year to date to see if there's any way where we can automate the categorization of those to reduce human activity and reduce the chance for human error. And basically, you know, we want to make sure that we're getting the accounting system set up as much as possible up front to avoid monthly manual work that can have a greater risk of error associated with it. So once you have your company accounts established and you've set up your accounting system and you're maintaining this properly, the next thing to focus on in your tax and accounting system is staying up to date on your tax liabilities. What does this mean? Most likely on a quarterly basis from an income tax perspective, you're going to have quarterly tax payment requirements. So at least on a quarterly basis, if not on a monthly basis, we wanna be pulling down the relevant accounting reports and doing a tax projection, which is basically taking a look at your company's finances year to date from a tax perspective to determine what is your overall tax liability. We wanna do this for a couple reasons. Number one, for treasury management purposes, especially if you're holding a lot of assets in cryptocurrencies, we wanna be able to determine what your tax liabilities are so we can put that amount aside to pay the IRS or pay state tax agencies. Number two, we wanna look at if there's any tax planning opportunities. At any given point in the year, as your, 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 as, you know, your business fact pattern is developing, you're partaking in different types of transactions and business arrangements, there may be opportunities to reduce or optimize your tax position. Usually these opportunities you have to take advantage, advantage of throughout the year, not when you're filing your taxes. So through these periodic tax checkpoints and tax projections, we can identify any missed tax opportunities. And um, you know these are the two important things is from a tax perspective, tax projections to stay up to date on your tax liabilities to both be in compliance with your quarterly estimated tax payments and also make sure that you're not exposing any of your tax liabilities to validity risk while holding them in cryptocurrency, and then identifying any potential tax planning opportunities that may exist given what your current tax position is. Now, going back to my previous point, doing these forward-looking tax projections are virtually impossible if we don't have a good accounting system in place and that accounting system isn't being regularly updated. So all of these points tie together to make sure that your tax and your financial system is, is a, is a well-oiled running machine. Now, in addition to planning for your regular taxes, we also want to consider for Web3 businesses, sales taxes. Now, your sales tax requirements in terms of your collection and remittance can vary. On a state-to-state -state basis, you may have filing requirements on a monthly basis, quarterly basis, or yearly basis, but we want to stay on top of these tax obligations and we want to make sure that we're meeting all of these. The best way to do that is with an automated sales tax software that specifically focuses on blockchain, NFTs, and cryptocurrencies like Digital Impost. Are you a Web3 business owner looking for an experienced CPA firm that understands Web3 and digital assets? Look no further than Camuso CPA. We work specifically with digital asset investors and Web3 businesses on taxes and accounting. Regardless of the complexity of your accounting and tax needs, our team at Camuso CPA has you covered. Contact me and my team today to schedule an introductory consultation to discuss your needs and to see if we're a good fit to work together.